As the world experiences a chip shortage that's crippled some auto and electronics makers, the European Union has set out an ambitious plan to produce one-fifth of the world's output of those cutting-edge semiconductors by the end of this decade. The bloc is also pledging to develop its first quantum computer in five years as it looks to cut dependence on non-European technologies. The EU hopes its 2030 Digital Compass Plan will lead to the use of Made in Europe semiconductors in different aspects of the high-tech industry, including connected cars and artificial intelligence. Well, for more on the EU's 2030 Digital Compass Plan, let's speak to Malcolm Penn in London. He's the founder and chairman of the leading global semiconductor industri industry consultancy, Future Horizons. Welcome back to the program, Malcolm. Now, when you and I spoke last, we were talking about the effect that this global chip shortage has had, particularly on car makers, some of whom have had to stop production entirely because they just can't get their hands on these semiconductors. The EU now says it wants to commit around $150 billion to help it become one of the leading makers of semiconductors by 2030. What do you make of those ambitious plans? Can it do it? Um, well, it certainly is very ambitious, and it's not the first time that we've been trying to do something like this. Um, back in 2012, um, Vice President Commissioner Neely Crows had a similar plan uh, which aimed to having 20% of chip production in Europe. Um, but it didn't really get the support from the semiconductor manufacturers back then. So the real question is, will they support it this time around? OK, interesting. Well, some of the world leaders at the moment in this industry, uh, Intel and Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., what are the equivalents in Europe? And do you think it'll be possible for those European manufacturers to scale up in a relatively short amount of time? Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, you need two things. You need the technology push and you need the market pull. And in Europe, there isn't really the market pull for this kind of chip uh, production. Um, Nobody is really using that those high level of chips in Europe right now. So you're really starting from a point whereby the demand actually isn't there. You're going to have to create the demand as well as actually um, create the desire for the current chip manufacturers to want to actually make these devices. And we know the European Commission is in a bit of damage control right now. They've uh, received a lot of criticism for the bungled rollout of the coronavirus vaccine across the continent. And a lot of people are blaming that on the Brussels bureaucracy. Do you think that this uh, notorious bureaucracy could threaten these ambitious plans? Well, it, I mean, sometimes the bureaucracy works in its favour. In the past, um, they have had some tremendous successes in coordinating the whole food chain of industry into producing the goods that's needed. We did it very successfully uh, with the 3G mobile phone scenario, um, but then never followed through on the 4 and 5G. So the bureaucracy does have the ability to actually pull the different parties together um, but of course, sometimes the bureaucracy doesn't work in the same time scale and speed as industry. Uh, and that's the real problem. The industry works much faster. As I mentioned, Taiwan is one of the world's leading semiconductor manufacturers right now. I'm wondering, though, is mainland China looking to muscle in on that? We know that relations huh. between China and Taiwan are quite uh, tense at the moment and have been for quite some time. Do, do you know if mainland China is looking to become a global leader themselves? Yes, they are. I mean, they have a plan to be a global leader in semiconductors. Uh, at the moment, their plans are being thwarted by the fact that the embargo imposed by the US is stopping these kind of technology exports to, to China. So they're being starved of the technology to build these fabs here, um, but they're determined to. And one way or the other, they will. And the big question is, um, they still consider Taiwan to be part of the Republic of China. And will one day they actually um, take it over? And, and therefore gain um, immediately the leading edge uh, capability just by simply um, nationalising TSMC. If they did that, um, the world would grind to a halt. Mm. It would make coronavirus uh, look like it was just a simple glitch. Um, ah. The world would come to a halt if TSMC stopped producing chips for the West. Well, in the meantime, we'll keep an eye on the EU's ambitious plans. Malcolm Penn, a pleasure to speak with you as always. Thank you for that. Thanks very much indeed.